after what seems like an eternity look what we've got up in the air this is the 10 meter transmit antenna for the repeater i'm here with tricky hey yeah <laughs> oh dear this has been a project and a half hasn't it Ooh, yes tricky's just uh he's just doing up some cable ties so originally we're going to put the dipole on this tower here but uh there was some logistical issues weren't there so we decided uh against that and uh we've got a serio 827 vertical antenna which we've put here on the roof which is this this uh location has quite a very good outlook from up here you can see for miles and miles so hopefully this is also going to be heard worldwide so uh, we've got that installed we put in a common mode current choke here so this is just uh, some ferrite beads mixed 31 ferrite beads there's probably about 800 ohms of impedance um, in that we've got the radial plate which keeps these radials because they do bounce around a little bit so sort of keeps them sort of central I was going to use this antenna to convert to six meters for a six meter repeater but we decided in a pinch to grab it and use it for the transmit antenna here. So it's a 5 8 weight vertical. So it should have a low radiation angle um, and uh, it should get out quite well. So it wasn't a cheap antenna. It was like $389, I think, which I'm going to have to get another one now so I can put it on my 6 meter repeater. So, but anyway, that's what happens when you build repeaters and uh, you want to get these things going. You spend a bit of money, but anyway, we'll get it done at the end of the day. So. It's looking rather nice, rather professional. Inside, we'll show you where the transmitter is. I might need to do some B-roll though because it is very loud inside. There's a lot of noise, so I'll put some B-roll here over the top of what it looks like anyway. And that's basically the transmitter sitting in the rack. Uh, that's the 50 watts. It's a MLS2, GE MLS2 radio, 50 watts. Um, and then that's just uh, connected to an Arcom RC210 controller. Now that the 10 meter antenna has uh, gone up, the next step for the transmit, the next step is the receive. So uh, the receive will probably be down this way somewhere, um, up and over the hill. So you can't quite see it from here. So that's going to be the next step um, after this one. This is the receiver. I've got the voting board, which you've seen in some of my other videos. Uh, the GPS here from QRP Labs, uh, a little uh, TTL to RS-232 converter and the receiver itself and that's in a nice little 19 inch mounted rack progress progress tricky still <laughs> putting some putting some uh finishing touches on which is good so we like to make sure that everything's done neat and proper which it does it looks very good doesn't it <laughs> and no one comment on my san francisco giants uh, hat i got that when i was in america when i went to my first baseball game now with antennas like this and a couple of others, there are some things that you may not know about. The first thing is, is that these antennas, uh, they have different metal types that bond together. So for instance, there's a little brass insert that goes into the radials so that you don't crush it when you uh, tighten up the radials. Now that can present a bit of a problem. Now the problem has to do with dissimilar metals. So brass and aluminium being different, they can cause corrosion in the presence of uh, moisture getting in. So I had to use something called this, Duralex. So this is anti-corrosive jointing compound and it inhibits ele electro, 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 how do you say it? Electrosis, electros, electrosis, <laughs> I can't say it. You know what I mean. Anyway, it stops the dissimilar metals uh, corrosion between the two. So this is this is green. Um, it goes absolutely everywhere. So this is for use on masts, winches, antennas, screws, rivets. It's, it's mainly, I think, for like marine type stuff where a highly corrosive environment. The thing is, is that the antenna will um, be in a bit of a corrosive environment being out in the weather all the time. It's going to be raining. It is relatively close to the sea as well. So uh, yeah, it's, it's something that you might want to put on your um, connections, on your dissimilar metal connections the other thing that i did too was put some of this on this is uh, carbon conductive grease so uh, this was just to put between the aluminium uh, vertical radiator elements so that there would be a better electrical connection a little bit of grease there also to stop the uh, water from getting in so you can see there the remains of the or the, the artifacts of the duralex so i've got that for the dissimilar metals because you've got this um i think this is cast aluminium hub and then you've got the aluminium tubing from the radials but in here are little stainless grub screws 
So I was worried that they would rust and they would bind. So we put some Duralec in there. And the antenna also uses self tappers, so stainless steel self tappers. So I had to put some Duralec on that, uh, on those self tappers as well to stop that from happening. And in addition, I also put some uh, glue line heat shrink as well over the um, elements so that the, it was sealed so that the screws wouldn't fall out and so that the, there'd be no moisture getting into the screws as well. Let me know if you've got an, a Serio 827 antenna because um, this tunes up very well. It's like one to one. You done over there yet? Anyway. <laughs> Looks good. good. The glorious Mount Wellington. One of our other repeaters is up on top of there too. Let's get this thing on the air, eh? Let's do it. Welcome to the VK7RHF10 meter amateur repeater system. The time is 9.14 p.m. VK7RHF. 